Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine. Uh, we've had yet another week of our uh, experience with COVID. Uh, I want to catch you up on a lot of stuff that's going on. It's been a very busy week here at uh, the Baylor College of Medicine and the city of Houston. We have uh, now gone almost uh, a week with a very low level of infections. For two days, we we're actually below 200. The, today, we jumped up a little bit over 200. But that's been the number we've sort of been uh, hoping for that allows us to think that we could be able to reopen or at least begin to think about reopening safely. That number was calculated based on hospital admissions uh, in our ICU uh, capacity. We're running around 10 to 13 percent ICU capacity right now. And our concern, of course, is if there's a spike up as we open up uh, businesses, that will suddenly be overwhelmed with patients needing ICU coverage. And we, the last thing we want to do is overwhelm the system because we can't then take care of everybody who needs it. So we've been thinking if we uh, have run around 10 to 15 percent positive uh, patients in our ICUs, we can rapidly expand that to about 30 or 40 percent uh, while still doing the rest of the business of most hospitals. So we think we're pretty comfortable with trying to open up. I would have liked it maybe if the governor held off another week, but I think it's a, it's a reasonable thing to start to think about how we come back to work. Uh, the second thing I wanted to, really good news, is the remdesivir trial that we participated in, rapidly enrolled uh, a placebo uh, uh, study, controlled study, uh, looks like in phase two it has a, a, a positive effect. So it's not all that clear. Uh, they've been doing dosing studies and time course studies, but even in phase two, there seems to be a positive signal in that um, uh, patients had a shorter hospitalization and, and a slightly reduced mortality. Not significantly reduced mortality, but a significantly reduced hospitalization time. So that's a very positive signal and will become the new sort of state of the art for care. And any other trials will now build on that will likely be in combination with remdesivir and, and some other intervention. So that's a positive thing. This reminds me very much of the way we started treating HIV uh, early on in the 80s with a single drug that seemed to work, uh, and then we started building on that. So that's a very positive development. And you know, the pop polymerases, like many other RNA polymerases, it's a target for therapy. And since we've shown the uh, ability for us to interfere with virus replication in this mechanism, uh, it's a very positive finding. So hopefully it'll, we'll get some therapeutics that will allow us to bridge the gap between now and when we have an effective vaccine. Uh, in addition to that, I mentioned last time that we had 59 applications for a uh, study uh, in my RFA for the Baylor community. And I got to review many of those. Uh, we had a little study section. And first of all, outstanding applications. Uh, every single one was good. Uh, they were sort of classed in, uh, there were some in epidemiology, some really good ones looking at risk factors, differences in outcomes, re really excellent uh, studies. Uh, there were very, a few on mechanisms, uh, several on uh, targeting therapeutics, new, new strategies for targeting therapeutics, and then a group that was really interesting on sort of developing virology reagents so we can better study the virus. We're going to fund between 10 and 13 of those, uh, and we will be getting to the investigators, but I just want to congratulate everybody who took the time, whether you got funded or not this round, uh, they were great applications, and you know, once again, I'm always thrilled that the Baylor community just steps up and, you know, fantastic uh, job uh, putting those in, so I want to I thank you. Uh, of course, politically, and, you know, because of the economics of our world, uh, many businesses want to open. The governor has uh, given us some guidance as to how to do that to try and bring us up to 25 percent capacity. This is not going to be easy at all, uh, and especially for a place like ours where in laboratories we bunch people together, we're forward uh, facing uh, people who, who are sick. We, we have bigger issues than, let's say, opening up a retail store. And so we are now developing the metrics and, and the process about how we will open up. Uh, our plan is within the next week or so to come up with a strategy around how we would most safely uh, allow people to come back to work. We'll probably do it in stages. I would best something like 25%, see how it goes, then 50%. And we're going to have to come up with how do we build in spatial distancing in our labs, in our learning environments, and in our, in our healthcare uh, workers. 
importantly, I know a lot of you have been out there saying, I, I want to get tested, everybody wants to get tested. We're in a very low prevalence community. There's not a lot of positives out there right now. And for us to take 2,000, 3,000, or 10,000 people and screen them today, we very likely have most of those, the vast majority of those will be negative. And that doesn't tell us you won't get infected tomorrow. And so testing alone doesn't do anything. Testing has to be connected with sort of tracing patients who are positive and looking at contact tracing. And, and that's where we're going to need our testing capacity. So you could imagine if we have uh, 200 people in the community that are positive so far that enter our hospitals, maybe they have met 10 or 20 people that were close contacts. Well, that's now, you know, f you're up to 4,000 tests a day almost. So that's the kind of the capacity we're going to need to develop around contact tracing. It's not just screening anybody randomly who walks in the door. And so that's part of what our planning is. How do we create a safe environment? How do we use testing intelligently to manage our own workforce? So that's going to be coming out, uh, I would hope, in the next uh, week to two weeks, probably within a week. The last thing I want to leave you with is, you know, I've been uh, stressing to everyone to connect with your, your family and your friends. It's very hard to, to remain isolated the way we have been, socially isolated. Uh, now I feel like I'm personal friends with uh, the, the voice on Zoom. Every time I talk to the Zoom lady, you're now in a conference, I feel like I'm, it's my only person I'm talking to. So as you know, uh, I have a dog, Leo, and Leo is fantastic, but Leo is is in North Carolina, and frankly, he ain't doing me no good. So I had to move on, and uh, like everybody, you need to find somebody who can give you some comfort. So I finally found my own uh, Leo, only her, her name is Lily. Uh, she is now my stress dog, uh, and I want to introduce you to her uh, this week. So once again, Baylor, fantastic week. Houston doing a great job. Can't wait to get us back into a semblance of work. We'll be rolling that out. And congratulations to all of you in the Baylor community. I want to thank you personally. You're doing a fantastic job. Keep it up. Thank you, Baylor. Thank you, thank you, and thank you.